Dr. Reese, thank you so much for coming and talking to me today. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So my audience probably has no idea who Dr. Reese is because he's not one of these famous doctors, but he has his audience. He has his own audience. But honestly, I only heard of you. I'll tell you exactly how I heard of you. LaShawn, who works with us, he works with both of us. He just contacted me one day and he was so excited. He said, Ryan, I got, I got like a real doctor. I got doctor. He's, I was signing up a doctor. <laughs> he, he's, and I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, he's not like a medical doctor, like an MD, but like he, he like works with people. He's like a PhD. He's got all these, you know, degrees and whatnot. He was very excited. And uh, I usually do not get that excited when doctors come into this business, uh, the <laughs> supplement business. Frankly, they usually just don't do very much with it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of talk involved, but at the end of the day, they usually do the same thing they've been doing. They usually have their way of doing things and change is minor and infrequent. And we signed up a lot of doctors in the past and nothing happened. So I didn't want him to get his hopes up too much. You know, it's a, it's a great thing to sign up a doctor. It shows his skills. Uh, and, you know, he's he's such a young guy that uh, that it's impressive. You know, he was able to you know, even communicate, as you know, a real doctor is real doctor. I use that semi facetiously because uh, that's what everyone considers to be a real doctor. But of course, there's many forms of doctor. You could be a geologist and you'd be called Dr. Smith or whatever. Right. 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 With a PhD. So, yeah, uh, you came into this business. I didn't have much hopes, but uh, you seem like a cool guy. And I said, that's great. You know, I, and I always hope that something happens with it because people take doctors seriously. I mean, even just with the name doctor, it just... I have no idea. It's this magic thing. And people have always told me you need to get a you know a degree of some kind so that people take you seriously. But uh, yeah. in any case, Dr. Reese uh, is just a human being to me, frankly. And his story gets more interesting the more I know about it. Uh, it reminds me of myself a little bit, like totally not a health person at all. Mm -hmm. And then switching fully into that career and yeah. uh, is also multifaceted within that career. You know, he came to us in interest of nutrition, but already having a lot of experience with detox and especially you work with Dr. Robert Morse, who a lot of people would be familiar with. He's uh, pretty mainstream these days and uh, as well as postural therapy, which is a very important, you know, aspect to health. So you got a very well-rounded view here and you've been working with us for a year or so, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. About 15 months. Cool. So you've got our perspective in line too. And you've had me on your podcast as well and allowed me to speak. And I like going on other podcasts and speaking. But in this case, I'm going to let you speak because okay. I'm very interested. First of all, I'd, I would really like a, a little uh, summary of your story. You know, you started in the broadcasting uh, arena in hip hop of all things, which mm -hmm. really, I, I didn't even, you sent me this video and I had to look twice. I, I couldn't figure out which one you were originally because you were you were such a big boy and uh, <laughs> a totally unrecognizable, basically. So it was a very cool transformation to see you uh, sitting there in front of us. Unfortunately, I don't have my camera on. It's a little bit creepy, maybe for the audience, but I'm looking at you. You look great. You look like a completely different human being with a completely different outlook on life. I'm not sure if I'm correct on that, but uh, I'd like you to tell us about it. Well, that video I sent you, I sent it specifically because it, it was with Drake and he's from Toronto. So there was a subliminal there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I used to be a radio and television personality in the hip hop genre. I got in it, you know, 17 years old. And, you know, by the time I was 21, I was on professional radio and you know, I spent my 20s interviewing celebrities and going to mansion parties at 50 Cent's house and being a shock jock on the radio, mm -hmm. and hosting concerts and, you know, having one foot in the street life because you can't be in hip hop and not be somewhat in the streets. You just can't. <laughs> Maybe these days with Instagram and such, you can avoid it, but. In my day, I had to, you know, go to the clubs. I had to mingle with the gangsters. I had, you know, I, I've seen my share of guns and knives and all that. And I, and you probably have too, because you had, you were neck deep too when you were younger. So, yeah. And then when I was 28 years old, I had a health scare. And 
and that led me down the medical monopoly path. And that's when I had that aha moment that, oh my gosh, I mean, they're just jumping me from million dollar machine to million dollar machine. And there's, there's nothing they can do for me. And you're just a regular person at this point. You're in broadcasting. Um, I mean, you just, you have a job, you, you're not a health dude at all. You're not yep. jogging. You look yep. like you were very overweight. I was, yeah, 28 years old, director of a broadcasting school and a radio personality, overweight, fast food, late nights, chasing women, you know, just that kind of a fast life, trying to make it. And, and, then I, and then this heart attack scare shook my world up. And then that brought on anxiety. And anxiety is a bad feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a bad feeling. And I, I felt like my life was being turned upside down. And I knew I had, to, I had to fix it myself. And I started learning natural health. I started getting into juicing and things like this. Fruits and vegetables. You Step know. one for sure. Yeah. Yep. And, and, I, and I turned it around. I eventually got off the cigarettes and quit alcohol. And then naturally, as you know, what happens is people start asking questions. Too bad I didn't have longevity then. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm answering questions. I'm like, I kind of like this. Because I always considered myself a teacher. Because I was teaching radio at a broadcasting school. So mm -hmm. I, I was a teacher in front of a classroom with a whiteboard the whole nine yards. But how much radio can you teach? I mean... And, and so I was like, you know, maybe I should become a health coach or something. So I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and I started learning, you know, the game and how to become a health coach. And then I started taking clients and I started getting results. And then I went to school. Then I went to Florida to study with Dr. Robert Morse for his four day seminar. Okay. And. You know, I came home from there with like you know, what what felt like X-ray vision. You know, learning the the organs and such, and how detox works. And I just started working with people, and I I started getting results, man. And I quit radio, uh, live on the air. Uh, you know. <laughs> And, and that was that. You, you didn't and, say and, anything rude or anything while you did it, no? No, no, no. My, pro my program director knew I was doing it. You know, you should have seen the look on his face when I walked into his office. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And it's like, well, where are you going? Nowhere. What do you mean? You're quitting radio radio? I'm like, I'm quitting radio radio. It wasn't like I was going to another radio station across the country. I was quitting the whole thing. I was about to reinvent myself mm. is essentially what I, what I was about to do. And everyone thought I was nuts. They thought I was nuts. Cause when you're on the radio, you're, you know, you have prestige and you know, people think you're rich and you know, girls are interested in you and you know, all the gangsters took care of me because I made them laugh, you know? <laughs> And so I was, you know, you get into the clubs free, you, mm -hmm. go, you know, the concerts backstage. And so, yeah, I, I just, I just quit the whole thing and, and started a whole new journey, got myself healthy. And then somewhere along the, well, here's, here's what happened. It was total ego, Ryan. I, I, I was represented by a entertainment attorney for my radio show and we became friends and he loved that I quit. He thought it was admirable and all that. And so he was following my health career. And one day he calls me and he says, Hey, I got these other clients and they're looking to piggyback off the success of the biggest loser, you know, that TV show. Mm -hmm. And he's like, why don't we do a show on detox? And you're like the detox coach and you live in a house and it'll be a reality TV show. Like on network television. On network television. So I'm like, let's do it. He's like, he sets up the Skype. Zoom wasn't around then. 
And I get on the I get on the Skype call with two producers. And after about 20 minutes, they're like, hey, we like you. We like your personality. You're a good looking guy. You could do this, but who's gonna watch? You're not a doctor and you don't have a book. Mm. I mean, I got off that Skype and I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> I see now what I have to do. Total ego. I hopped online immediately and looked for schools and tried to figure out what my next move was. Nature path, PhD. And I said, no, I'm a teacher at heart. So let me do the PhD. So I found a school that accepted a 34 year old, you know, and you're, you're about that age now, right? Mm -hmm. So just imagine going to school and you know, it's got, you know, it's got five year run. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to contemplate that big of a move right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I did it because I didn't feel like I was being taken serious, just like what you said some minutes ago. And I wanted to be taken serious, so I did it. Even with the testimonials, I had, I had outrageous testimonials, just stuff that are you can only say are miracles mm -hmm. and, you know i 100 percent believe you. you don't even have to mention it Al almost anybody in this field you, you can start transforming lives with the simplest of changes yep pretty much but what i discovered is is you know those changes you know the key is to make them long lasting and a lot of people get those changes in the first few months, but, you know, their health can deteriorate, say, three years later. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned in the detox industry. But that's perhaps another topic. But, you know, so I went down that path. And, you know, by the, ta by the time my diploma showed up, I didn't even really want it because I was having I was going through all sorts of like spiritual stuff. And I was like, man, I'm not even Kevin. Never mind, Dr. Reese. <laughs> I was ready to throw it out. Yeah. You know, I went to an event and the mayor of my city was there. And she came around and introduced herself. And I introduced myself as Kevin Reese. And a buddy of mine pulled me over to the side and said, why, why didn't you introduce yourself as Dr. Kevin Reese? I go, I don't know. I, got, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't felt feel like it mattered he's like that's the mayor and he was like man you he's like you did all that school you better be slinging that thing <laughs> yeah, and he challenged the, me. the title he challenged me he said he said start calling restaurants and getting reserved you know tables he's like you better start slinging that thing <laughs> <laughs> and so i had to get used to it and i eventually adapted it almost like a stage name like Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I changed, you know, I came up with a logo and I changed my Instagram and I, you know, I just started rocking Dr. Reese, Dr. Reese and just branding it. And, and I just had to get over it. You know, may maybe if I got it when I was 23, you know, it, it would have felt normal, but, um, so, yeah, so I was doing pretty well, but I got burnt out taking clients and whatnot. And, you know, there is a, a big spiritual undertone to the whole thing. A lot of things that happened and I just wasn't feeling it anymore. And so I opened a nonprofit organization, which I still have. And I just wanted to teach children to not eat junk food. That was my only thing. And... I was doing some other things and you've got a book for that too, right? You've got a, you've got a children's, children's book. book. Yeah. And you can, and tell, then, you, you want to tell us about it? Is that at this time? Yeah. Sunlight, sunny. It's still, still available. Out Sunlight, there. sunny. Yeah. I haven't had enough time to really double down on it, but what happened basically is I fell into some pain and it's like 10 years later after my health scare, it was happening again. But this time it was carpal tunnel syndrome and costochondritis. And then my calves went out. It was very weird. What do you mean they went out? And they you're not clenched. overweight at this time, eh? No, 
No, they clenched up and I couldn't even drive. I couldn't even drive. My mother had to drive me around when I needed to leave because you know, the, the gas pedal and the calves have something they go course. together. Yeah, people wake up with uh, with that uh, begging for mercy, you know. Charlie horse. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was like a it was like a permanent Charlie horse. Yep. And I didn't know what the heck was wrong with me. And my back, I was having spasms in my back. And that's when I met LaShawn. He was one of the, you know, I gave him a shout out in the beginning of my Peace Over Pain book because he was so um open mm -hmm. and he would just talk to me you know i lost my sleep my sleep was gone so what happened was my health was failing because of nutrition and posture at the same time and that sent me into what most spiritual seekers call dark night of the soul and this all happened at one time <laughs> and it was one heck of a journey and to keep myself busy, I started studying nutrition because I'm like, holy crap, I, I got so engulfed in the detox game that I never really understood nutrition at the level of you and LaShawn and Dr. Wallach and Dr. Glidden, et cetera. And I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> And, and so I had to go back to the drawing board and become a beginner. So this is like, I mean, you, you went in, you came into the health game, cleared yourself out, cleaned up your food, yeah. lost a bunch of weight, you know, uh, in the detox game, you'd be talking about like heavy metals and stuff like that. I'm sure all that was cleared out. Parasites. You know, there's parasites are killed. And then, you know, the digestion is cleaned up and whatnot. But now, okay, you've cleared the bad stuff out. What about the fuel? You know, what what about the stuff that we're made of and that uh, our cells cellular functions I, run off? The nearest I can tell, Ryan, I, I depleted myself from doing juice fasting. I was juice fasting like three times a year for you know sixty to one hundred and fifty days. Wow. Each. And no supplements at all. I mean, every now and again I take a vitamin D, but in the winter, I take vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That's it. And to the nearest I can tell, I depleted myself. And when I started learning Wallach and Glidden and you, I was like, oh, okay, well, there it is. And then I, and then I, <laughs> I was going to the osteopath, the chiropractor, and they didn't have any answers. And then I found postural therapy. And I was out of pain in three weeks. And I was like, holy crap, what is this? I need to learn this immediately. And I started learning how posture affects the metabolism. And that my calf issue is connected to my hips and my shoulders and my ears. I'm like, the what? leg bones connected to the hip bone, right? Yes. And my mind is blown. It's just blown at this point. And I'm in dark night of the soul and I'm crying every day. <laughs> and uh, my mother thinks I'm going nuts, literally, because everyone thinks you go nuts when you're in a dark night. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had to do was study. So I found a, a posture school, which is Agascu. And I enrolled, you know, and I started learning. And while I'm doing that, I'm making sure I'm up on my nutrition knowledge studying wallach like crazy and glidden and then i found a nature path who had a workaround for blood tests and urine tests and whatnot and so i kind of accepted him as a mentor he didn't know he was my mentor but i accepted him as a mentor. <laughs> i went in there and i never said i was doctor or anything like that i was just kevin in bad shape and he started running labs and we started going through the labs and he doesn't know that i'm just learning i'm learning and i'm learning and i'm learning and i'm like okay my essential fatties are low okay my crp is high that was the other thing that bugged me out my crp jumped up to a 6.1 
And I'm like, how can that be? I'm, I've been vegan for 10 years. That's impossible. How, how come I have cardiovascular inflammation? Come to find out, oils. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oxidation. Yes. So I'm trying to figure all this out. But as I'm doing this, I'm learning how to read labs. And now I know how to read them. And so this is survival for me. But in my head, I'm like, I'm going to be able to help so many people. And this is when I adopted clinical nutrition, not just nutrition, clinical nutrition, as you read in the book. Because we can check. We can actually check. And, and, there, and there's markers. You know, there's markers that we can see. Uh, I, I just took a, a heavy metals test and found out my arsenic is high. So now I'm working on that. But if I never knew, if I never checked, I would have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know? So that, that's the power of checking. And it, it, it can get expensive. That's why I, I lucked out by finding a naturopath that had the insurance coverage. So I learned posture and clinical nutrition at the same time. And that's what evolved me to what you see today with the new book, Peace Over Pain, and being able to help people at a whole new level. I, I mean, I feel, you know, maybe the reason why I wanted to throw my diploma away is because I had like the imposter syndrome or something. Mm. But that's gone. I can hang with MDs, no problem. <laughs> you can as well. When you understand nutrition at this level, you know, you can hang. And back in 2018, I, I couldn't have, I, I, I couldn't have hung around and had those combos. I've had debates with MDs and they just, they would just destroy me <laughs> because I was always detoxed. Oh yeah, detox. And you gotta, you know, you gotta get your kidneys filtering. Everything in detox is about getting your kidneys filtering. And, and, and Dr. Wallach is on. And that's because it's corroborated. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it's luck of the draw and coming from the animal world and farming and agriculture and, and pathology just because there's no controversy. You're, you're allowed to learn how the mammal body works, you know, in a non-controversial way. This nutrient builds this tissue, this nutrient sends this hormone you know if they're missing this thing they get water belly and they die so you give them this thing like it's just so simple and it's just into plain english that you can chew tobacco and understand you know and uh he's unique in this field because no one else comes from animals i don't mean to say no one else but like to top of my head i'm searching i don't know any other mainstream or even alternative doctor who transferred from the animal world to the human world and, and transformed, you know, human nutrition basically as a result, because all it really took was putting animal nutrition principles into human formulas that taste better. I'm sure. The autopsies, man, the autopsies. That's unique. That's, that is unique. Yeah. yeah. Not too many pathologists at all come to mind when you talk about health people. He, he, Dr. Wallach is the, he's the Dr. Sheldon Cooper of nutrition. That's mm. how I view him. You know, he's just, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think he's the greatest teacher in the world. I think Glidden's a better teacher. Oh, he's really broken it all down. But Wallach is the, you know, he's, he's the, he's the, he's the guy that planted the flag mm -hmm. and said, Hey, this is the truth. You know, so all credit to him. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I found LaShawn on one of those sleepless nights. And, you know, that led me to you as well and Wallach and learning and being a, a part of longevity and helping so many people now at a whole new level and adding the posture, Ryan, it's just the, the healings that can happen is, is nothing short of miraculous when you combine the two and mindfulness as well. So please, please, by the way, tell us about this posture. I just, let, let me jump in for one second here. 
Mm. So this postural therapy, this is, this is also a degree in itself. You've got these degrees behind you. You've got all these letters by your name. Uh, if you could kind of explain that for us and, and you know, what those mean, just very briefly, I'm interested in that uh, because postural therapy is not something that, that you hear every day. Mm. Um, and I'm very interested in it. I, I really enjoyed your book, by the way. I already gave it a good review, as you know, but the audience may not know. That's Peace Over Pain. Uh, definitely, definitely an ex excellent introduction especially for somebody who's just ready to take action you know it's just so simple and uh, straightforward it's not a huge book like literally pretty i, don't, I was going to say pretty much but i think literally anyone could read it there's no difficult language in it or anything and it tells you exactly what to do to get started and mm -hmm. uh, how to understand it too all at the same time is very very concise in that way mm -hmm. so i'd like to know a little bit about what the letters mean and i, I believe i'm uh, gauging that the postural therapy is the most recent one so what do you got three what do you got three diplomas i got four yeah receipts on the wall there you see yeah. postural therapy is pas it's posture alignment specialist and what posture is posture is just basically where your muscle memory is locked into and so a lot of people think it's, you know, how you're sitting and stuff like that, but it's not it's more so how you're standing, actually. And so we can see your posture through photos, which I call in the book P-rays instead of X-ray, it's P-ray. And we use the bones and the joints as a gauge. So your bones and joints didn't do anything wrong. They're just innocent bystanders of the muscles. But in order to gauge it, we need to see the joints and the bones. And we can do that right in the photos as long as you're wearing shorts and a tank top. And based on those photos, we can then prescribe, I like that word, prescribe a protocol of corrective exercises. And they change every two weeks. And we take new photos every two weeks. And so you, the client, the person actually sees the changes. So it's very clinical in that way. And once you see the changes, you get motivated. Like, oh, this is working. This just happened with my mother, who's all excited because she gained an inch. 73 years old, she just gained an inch. And she, you know, they, they had her down to 410 and she's back up to 411. So pause, pause there for a second, right? People are hearing this. So what do you mean gained an inch? Where the inch go? It, it, <laughs> it didn't go anywhere, but there's, it's in the spine, right? You yeah. coil compression. up a rope and it's smaller. Yeah, it's it, compression. So through the therapy and she, and she's, she's like a half believer. So she's looking at me like, is this from the posture, postural therapy? I'm like, of course, what else would it be from? Right? So you know, because we're constantly getting the muscles out of dysfunction, getting them back into balance. And then what happens? The bones and the joints start going back to where they're supposed to be. And that includes the spine. So that's how she grew an inch. They, you know, the discs just open up. There's more space in between. For anyone out there with a bulging disc or herniated disc, this is more than likely where it comes from. Could, could be nutritional as well. This is why we hit both at the same time. Excellent, yeah. You give, get them on the glucose gel, make sure they're on the osteo FX, right? Make sure they're off of the bad foods and do postural therapy. It's it's win-win all the way around. Well, Kevin, I loved how you described it in the book. Let me just say that like, okay, obviously your, your joints are made of stuff that if you didn't know the, the discs are cushioned with a connective tissue, it's made of connective tissue okay that matters but you explained it in the book like taking your hand and grinding it against your other hand and it doesn't take very long to just start to you're going to open a scab up on your hand very very quickly it's going to be painful and this is what yeah. happens when your posture is off because like you said you're you're in that position kind of all the time if you're if you're walking to one side that joint is getting sort of scraped you know constantly you're heavy like humans are heavy this is a lot of weight this is a lot of pressure and there you goes know, the cartilage your car has nice smooth bearings that are supremely greased they're literally bathed in grease you know and even they're going to wear out you know if, if everything's not kept up in check but yeah. you're you're wearing skin on skin bone on skin like this is no wonder 
people yeah. are in such pain, you know, and no wonder that the need for connective tissue is now even higher, right? The, even their ability to repair their connective tissue, how is it really going to repair itself if you're constantly hitting it? You know, if your posture's off and every step you take is digging more into that spot, you know, so you're taking all the connective tissue you want and it's barely able to even repair the damage you did last week. You know, yeah. it's not able to catch up. So you got to get that pressure off. I mean, I, I love that, that explanation there. So this, um, this is, this is key, man. A lot of people, there's so many things to health that we fail to mention on a daily basis because we're only able to hit nutrition with our really hard hammer. You know, that's really, we really focus on, but yeah, posture freaking matters. You know, you got to take care of your spine. You got to be conscious of it. You got to, you got to not only move, but move intelligently, you know, mm -hmm. in ways that are going to encourage proper circulation and posture. And I'm speaking out of turn here because I don't even know that much about this subject. Really, it's not my specialty. So, well, but you, you know, you're a smart guy. I mean, you you understand it just off reading that chapter. So, it, it's a competitive advantage for athletes. Oh my gosh, you know how many injuries could be prevented from a soccer player or a baseball player? And, and I was talking to us, a thirteen-year-old, a thirteen-year-old soccer player, a thirteen-year-old girl. Not that I was talking; I was talking to her mom, and she and she was in the room. And uh, you know, I was saying, "Hey, I bet I know, you know a bunch of people, you know, soccer friends that have already torn their Achilles and and rotator cuffs." And she goes, "Oh yeah, 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 right." These are thirteen-year-old girls; they're tearing their Achilles tendons and rotator cuffs, and you know, so this is the, this is the result of these combined if, problems. If women, females, females end up with more lag and knee issues than males because of the hips. The hips are bigger. The pelvis is bigger than males, you know, and then, and then us tenacious computer athletes, you know, sitting at a computer for hours at a time, working a mouse, that's more unnatural than playing football. So, you know, we're getting messed up. That's how I got messed up. My back was hurting just the other day. I could feel the muscles spasming a little bit. I changed up my postural therapy routine. I did some uh, supoin, supoin groin, groin stretches for okay. long, extended periods of time, which is uh, exercise, and gone. <laughs> and a lot of people have probably experienced this in some way, too, even just going and getting straightened out for a minute with the chiropractor. I mean, it feels really good uh, for a little while, at least. But if, you're, if you continue to walk, you continue, continue to go back to your bad po posture habits, I mean... You're going to continue to be back in pain, you know? Yeah. Postural therapy. What I like to say is it, it's to your muscles. What brushing your teeth is to your mouth. And we use our muscles every day. You and I are using them to sit down right now. We're using our psoas muscle right now. The iliopsoas, which is connects your lower spine to your femurs. Okay. Your thighs, right. Cause if you're sitting in a chair, it's you're, your your legs are up in sort of a 90 degree right mm -hmm. <laughs> so your muscles your psoas is pulling your legs up <laughs> wow. when you when you um urinate you're using muscles in the pelvic floor so we're constantly using muscles and postural therapy is what keeps us loose and limber and you know, this is why Tom Brady's going to play football until he's 75 years old. He does this stuff. He's loose and limber. He, he stopped hitting the weights. Tom Brady is not muscular. He's just fit. <laughs> yeah, he's fit and healthy. He's into his nutrition and he does his posture stuff. And, he, and, and the guy is going into his 22nd season in football. It's unheard of. This is a tackle sport. It's mm -hmm. unheard of. So posture matters. Nutrition matters. Mindfulness matters. Mindset, whatever you want to call it. It's, you know, when, when you put all three together, man, life can be pretty good. So uh, maybe I'm putting you on the spot here, but you asked me a long time ago for me to send you the P-rays for myself because 
part of my story that's been buried in the feed that a lot of people don't know that was uh, I was born in pain. I was born with my hips dislocated and I was C-sectioned out of my mom because I probably would have died attempting to go through the birth canal if you're all tangled up. You know, uh, I don't know how they, they didn't really do much to fix it. I think they put me with like two or three diapers or something for the first while, just kind of like tried to hold me together tight, mm-hmm. you know, and, and hope that it uh, the hips would set in. But they never really did set in properly. Mm. That did. I, I grew up in pain, and I had very, very bad posture, especially towards the end. I I worked with a seventy year old man, seventy year old professor, uh, who recently passed. By the way, is quite sad. Uh, professor Ian S F Jones. But uh, I basically walked like him, and I was like 22, 23 years old, and I'm, I'm standing like him, you know, hunched over. Uh, even my friends would make fun of me for a hunched back. You know, I couldn't turn my head properly, and I'm saying all this because like the the nutrition fixed. A lot of it, a lot, like more than I ever thought was possible for sure. At least the the pain part almost immediately disappeared with with the proper nutrition. And, and I'm talking about within six days because I only had six sample packs. So the pain's gone. Boom. Okay. Uh, muscles start to feel better, you know, a little bit over time. I have this big crunchy thing in my neck that I always had, but it, at one point it was like the size of uh, maybe like cut a tennis ball in half. So I got this half a tennis ball on the back of my neck off to one side and then a strip maybe a plantain size on the other side and when i could push these in they crack real loud and i took it to my doctor the first time and he's he's a very honest guy quite honestly my my general practitioner family doctor you know he never really liked to pin down a diagnosis on me he knows i've been in pain we've tried painkillers and sleeping pills and all this stuff it didn't really help that much i didn't like being a zombie so we kind of kind of just sort of let it be you know, if, just, if you can sort of live with the pain, then I guess live with it. It's better than being on drugs. If you don't want to be on drugs, there's no surgeries that are available to you. But I'd pop my neck. And he says, I've never even heard anything like that ever. You know, it's never, never been taught anything. And I've taken this to alternative people as well. And quite honestly, Dr. Wallet doesn't know either. And what he recommended first was to boost the MSM. So I did that. I put two bottles in a month for three months. I usually, if I'm going to test something, I'll do it for three months. So two bottles of MSM, that's 200 pound dose. I'm less than that. So it's a good solid dose. It took it down by about 75% and it hasn't really returned, but it's still there. It's still there. I don't even know if the microphone could catch it. Maybe most of it is just the sound is is ringing around in my skull because this is like my skeleton, you know, but it's still there. And I'm certain at this point that it is postural. And I took those pictures that you asked me for a while ago, and I just sent them to you right now. Oh, okay. and, and if you're a responsible broadcaster, you probably turned your phone on uh, away from you or, or turned it off or, or something like that. So you might not yeah. have seen it right now. But if you wanted to take a look at them, uh, it might be fun to identify this. And, and this is saying to the audience who my audience, I'm assuming, you know, they see me as a relatively healthy person. And it's, oh, yeah, true, it it's true that the nutrition does most of that job. But I still have a skeletal problem. It, you know, my hips are still displaced. Certainly. I know that even just by looking at them, just by watching a couple of your videos, Dr. Reese, and, you know, seeing, you know, putting up, you know, you need to put a line, I can put a pencil in front of it and see I'm not straight, I'm not standing straight. At, yeah, your head, your head is crooked. All right. So let's share my screen and I'll show you. Okay. This, this is me trying to stand straight as well. Okay. So first thing that stands out to me is your, your feet, your you're averted big time and you have a wide stance. Now, when that, what that means is that means that your hips are very weak. Duck foot. Yeah, your body wants to stand straight. That's its natural instinct. And so this is why your, your, your stance is so wide. We call it the uh, Eiffel Tower stance. Your body is trying to keep you up. And you're reverted. So look at your knees. Look at this knee right here. That knee is not straight. This knee is not straight. So what that means is your femurs right here and your thighs are rotated. They're they're facing the other way. And so what you're saying about what happened to you when you were born makes a lot of sense because they're, they're just going outward and, and that's reflective in the feet because mm. your feet should be straight. Your feet should be like this. 
So that's the first thing. Look, look how much space you got here in between. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. You should be like this. Your foot should be right here. And again, this is, is me trying to stand straight. Like it's, uh, it's genuinely painful and it kind of always wow. has been to try and put the feet straight. Uh, you spin certain gym teachers and stuff. You kick my feet in a little bit, you know, stand straight, you know, or anybody trying to teach you like etiquette or something. Older right. people I'm thinking of like, keep your feet straight. I'm like, I can't do it. It yeah. hurts to put them straight. I always wore shoes out on one side as well. Right. Yeah. Wear them, wear them down on the outside because I'm standing duck footed. Right. Right. That's very interesting. But your shoulders look pretty good. Pretty lined. Um, you do have some rotation though. You can you, you see, I can see, I can see the front of your hands instead of just your thumbs. So that's a big indication. You got the puppy dog posture. You see your head's crooked. Mm -hmm. You see it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that before? I notice it all the time. Uh, that's where the heart of the problem was with my my yeah. growing up pain it was in the neck even though the hips have been they've always been displaced i never particularly had hip pain you know right. i can just tell that my posture has always been way off and you you mentioned the the hands rotated basically i had a full-blown hunch you know the shoulders were fully in uh, for many years look at this you have cervical flexion so your cervical spine is forward and your head is tilted look at your ears now, at this time, I took this picture a few months ago as well. Uh, obviously, it gets particularly bad when we sit up, sit down. This was probably two months of sitting. And as you can see, all there along my back where the most pain was too, I was getting pimples there too. You know, and they weren't really, they weren't from food. You can tell when digestion is off and stuff. It was just like, no, your lymph is off. I don't know, something, everything's off and it happens right there. If, if something is hurting, especially around that top of that neck and right there by that shoulder where it meets the arm. Those, yeah. And that side, the right side, that's the one that always hurts the most. And yeah. there's always pimples there when that happens. Yeah, that's that's your posture causing some lymphatic stagnation, more mm -hmm. than likely. More than likely. And so you can see the difference here. Look, look at your... your it just looks different. Mm -hmm. The left side looks different than the right side. So you're definitely off balance something going on with the neck big time but it's correctable <laughs> that's the beauty of it um yeah look look your eyes are not going forward they're going down and that's this is something by the way that did get i'm gonna say significantly better just with uh maybe five to ten sessions of chiropractor i mean it, it straightened me out a fair bit. That's what got me this straight. But um, there's still a long way to go. Obviously, yeah, you can see the head tilting way forward. That's a lot of weight. How much yep. does the head weigh? Head weighs about 10, 11 pounds. That's pretty heavy. So now when you're forward like that, it, the muscles are treating it like it's 50 pounds. So yeah. that line there, where what should be there? The eyes? The, the ears. Ears. Yeah, your ankles should match up with your ears. And your knees are forward too. You're hyperextended. Your mm -hmm. knees are forward. And like you said earlier, the hunch, the hump. Mm -hmm. the hump. That's uh, what we would call kyphosis. There is a hump there. Let's see. Oh, I might have dragged in the wrong one. So I don't have your, your other side. But it's all revealing, man. You got quite a bit of arch in your lumbar. So you can see you got, of course, it changes. But you, <coughs> you got a lot of um, curves going on, a ton of curves. And uh, that lumbar, look at that. It's an interior pelvic tilt. So that means your pelvis is tilted forward. Right? You can mm -hmm. see it in your pants. Your pants start there on the left, and they end here. 
almost as if you had a pot belly, but you don't. Mm-hmm. So you, the clothes, are, the clothes are very revealing. Look at that. Completely on a slide. <laughs> you see it, right? Mm-hmm. Completely on a slide. And then it comes up and then you got the, the hump. And then your neck goes all the way in. And then comes up like this. Yeah. It's interesting stuff, man. Can you see why I, I, I got into this? I was just like, oh my, it's just mind blowing. It's it is interesting and it's um it's even though nutrition requires quite a lot of participation, much more than just taking a drug, you know, uh this is much more hands-on as well. And I need to do it, you know. You've been mentioning it for quite a while. I took these pictures m- months ago and totally forgot to send them to you, but uh <laughs> I'd, I'd like to pro- I'd like to report progress on this for sure, obviously. And by the way, I've been quoted a lot of money, like no joke money. This is sort of what kind of pushed me away from it. And like, okay, well, I'm I'm still getting my life together here, you know. <laughs> Finally, did now basically, but um, I'm not paying ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars for you know multiple sessions at a at a yeah. live in facility for whatever, however long it takes them to fix it. Two weeks, even no. this is like no, too much. Not at all, no. No, we we're we're well under five grand. And corrective chiropractic, I mean, this is a this is a specialty you don't find on every corner, you know. So no, that's what's interesting. Um, chiropractors are interesting creatures, aren't they? Because they use their doctor their doctorate as their credibility, but then they learn other things. Hmm. Kind of like I did with my PhD mm-hmm. in a way. Like Dr. Berg on YouTube, he's basically a nutritionist, but he's a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So not all of them know Basher. But look at this, man. Look at that. Look at that line. Oh, I see it and I'm aware. And honestly, this is even something that I didn't think was was totally fixable, even though I I have had a few chiropractors tell me they could do it. over again, multiple sessions and whatnot, but uh, it seemed far off still to me. On, on my team, I have Rain Krause. She she's been doing this for twenty five years, so she she could analyze you even better than I can, and 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 help you. Look at look at your hands. Uh, not too bad, but you can see the right one's a little longer than the left one. Mm. Just a tad. Also notice that they're they're kind of closing. But that could have that could have just been you uh, opening and closing them. Could have been. It could it could mean that your muscles are just tight. Very likely. Well, you're a computer guy like me. Yeah, like I said, that was a two month stretch there, pretty much. non-stop on the computer there i know those stretches man yeah. i know those stretches oh they're brutal and but you want to get the job done yeah so you plow through it like an athlete would on the field or something mm-hmm. <laughs> well I'd rather spend a month or two doing it than it's uh, looming over me for years you know yeah yeah so very revealing but the knees your your left leg is um forward too, so that could mean that you're rotated forward. So, so I really didn't mean to make this all about me, but I am curious as to <laughs> what the advice would be. We can do that privately or not; doesn't really matter. But I, I sort of just wanted to bring to the attention of any audience members that there is more to health than nutrition, and you know this is why we're blessed to have you on the team as well. And I'm actively learning from you as well, and this is something I am actively interested in, especially because. From what I understand, if you can confirm that people can lar- largely do this by themselves. Am oh, I right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we do is so we have an app and we prescribe the exercises through the app. And every single exercise has a video. So there's there's no guess, there's no guesswork. Um, every now and again we get someone that's like, Oh, I can't do that exercise because the muscles are too tight 
or they just hit paint. So then we just change it up a little bit. But yeah, you just download our app. <laughs> and the, 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 the routine, the protocol comes right to your phone. But that, that's how we do it. And then you would upload your photos. And then we would look at your photos and then be able to give the protocol. Very cool. And then in two weeks, we do it again. And we take the photos from those two weeks ago and the photos from now, and we go side by side. And that's when light bulbs go off in people. In two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. Hmm. Yeah. But it's 15 minutes in the morning and it's 15 minutes in the evening. Seven days a week? Seven days a week. That seems reasonable. For the rest of your life. Well, <laughs> are these, uh, these would be the same exercises or once you've, once you've kind of fixed your problem, you go to some sort of baseline exercise program? Yeah. Yeah. Once you fix your issue, then you can go to a baseline strengthening. Okay. Well, a big problem is people, you know, they hit the gym or they do Pilates or yoga and those are strengthening type of things. And if your posture is off, you're, you're, all you're doing is locking yourself in position. So I recommend postural therapy all the time, but you, you want to straighten before you strengthen. Like you'll notice a lot of weightlifters that their head, their neck is like coming out of their chest. Mm -hmm. We noticed this in um, Vince, Mc Vince McMahon. I did a video on Vince McMahon. Uh, I don't know, a few months ago. And, you know, you can see his head is like, bam. See it? Mm. Wait you see it? Like a turtle. Yes. Yes. It's like me, like me, frankly. Not you're not as bad as him. Oh. Like his he, he's a weightlifter. Yep. So he's locked himself in place. And an interesting thing about Vince McMahon is, you know, he's been in the spotlight for what, 40 years, 50 years? If you listen to him just 15 years ago, he has this booming voice. And now he talks like this really gravelly but he's not a smoker mm -hmm. maybe he's got some free radical damage there maybe but i'd put my money on this neck issue yeah because he's not draining fluid and this is how people get allergies and such too or can because you know lymph fluid as you know doesn't pump like blood does you so, got to move it around somehow yeah posture is directly related to lymph because your joints are the pump but when your neck is like this you know he's not draining he's got he, he must have fluid up in here that's graveling his voice yeah looking yeah. at that picture makes me want to stretch right now <laughs> He's got to be in, in, in discomfort, and, uh, but he, you know, he, he works out, and uh, there it is. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Whew. It's like a sight. Look at that. Wow. And um, he's got crinkles in the back of his neck. I have crinkles in the back of mine, too. So I have it a little bit too. So what usually happens, Ryan, is the neck comes forward, but then the head comes back. So it goes flexion, extension. Mm -hmm. Yours doesn't seem to do that. Yeah, yours just kind of stays in, in flexion. It's interesting. Yeah, we'll evaluate them. I, I want to get, I want to have, um, I want Rain to, to check it out and see what she thinks. And we'll just send you over some some exercises and have you download the app and uh, maybe you can keep track on your Instagram. I definitely appreciate it. And yeah, I definitely uh, I'd make that public for sure. Cause it's, um, this is very valuable. And so let me say, 
most now these days, most of the people that we deal with are online and a heck of a lot of them, I, I can't even see them. I have, I have no earthly idea what they look like, you know, what type of person they are, what their posture could possibly be like, all sorts of things. And there are some difficult cases who, you know, continue to come to us about weird things. And I don't like fishing in the dark, but I kind of am in the dark. You know, it's true that you can help the the average person virtually quite easily. We reach a ton of people, a ton of people get good results just by the basic information, this and that. But I'm curious as to how many of them could possibly have a, a posture issue, you know, but beneath it all, just like how many of them have a root canal that's infected or something, you know, some of these things are becoming popular enough, like the root canal thing where people are investigating that on their own and doing something about it. But when we get a stumper case, like we're just not making progress. I mean, this could easily be one of those things. And as I've been watching you over the last few months, especially you've been posting these, these little videos, just like you did with me and just holding up the line and showing people I'm walking around out there in the real world and saying, wow, almost, almost everybody is just completely off. You know, it, everything is off the way they're walking, the way they're standing, the way they're sitting, you know, and I'm trying to correct it even in myself, but I'm still, I'm still awaiting the proper instruction. And that's, that's my bad for not uh, giving those, those, um, pictures are sooner but i know that it's a commitment right you have to be ready to do it my life's a little yeah. bit hectic, but uh i'm ready yeah. to do it ready to do it ready to commit to it because yeah. that's that's what it takes to make these changes you know it's, it's not abnormal to hear oh we gotta do this thing for 15 minutes twice a day and every day and if you don't do it every day then you're not going to get the result and that's why we slack on things so yeah hopefully, hopefully it is uh, fairly easy to do, to, but it wouldn't matter if it was difficult because it's time to fix it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Th things happen as they're supposed to. So, you know, you were meant to send them to me today, I guess, you know, and we were meant to do this recording. So I, yeah, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, not a big commitment at all. It really <laughs> isn't. And what you'll notice, one of the things that attracted me to postural therapy <clears throat> excuse me, is it similar de to detox where you actually get symptoms as you're correcting yourself <laughs> because your muscles are going back. And of course, there's going to be some craziness that happens. Mm -hmm. There has to be. Physiologically, there has to be. When I was fixing my neck, I ended up with vertigo for a few hours. That's not a fun feeling. No. So... I had to actually pull out a vertigo routine because we have routines based on symptoms too. Like we have headache routines, vertigo routines, TMJ routines, as if you were, as if you were recommending supplements, it's the same concept really. Well, let's explain this just a little bit too. Even Dr. Wallach's, uh, his most recent book, uh, it's all in your head. It's all about the 12 cranial nerves. And if any of them are being pinched for any reason, including the osteoporosis, uh, common factor, mm -hmm. any one of them gets pinched, you get a different symptom in the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the vertigo experience is, is one of them. But as you mentioned in your book as well, that those nerves also run through the body too. How many nerves are running through the spinal column? And you know, each one of those, anything that goes wrong anywhere, this can cause symptoms in the body. Yeah, there's what, 66 of them, I think. Lot. Two, yeah there's there's 60 something nerves plus the 12 in your head but where do these like this is where the connection to me wasn't obvious but it was a bit of a clicking moment like oh no they actually literally run through the spine and if the spine's like yeah. kinked then it can like yeah. kink the nerve and if you've held a hose while it's shooting out water and you kink it it no longer shoots out water oh you know this is why the mm -hmm. vagus nerve isn't working or this is you know this is why where the symptom came from yeah yeah, absolutely. And all your nerves in your spine are connected to your organs. So somebody could have heart palpitations and it could be coming from their spine. Mm -hmm. or, or somebody could uh, have kidney issues. It's coming from their spine. It's mind blowing stuff. But people always want an answer. It's hard to give an answer. That's why in the book, I, I say, let's just hit all three. Mm -hmm. Like why, why putts around? Like, let, let's change the diet. Let's give you the supplement. Let's do the partial therapy. Let's make sure you're doing mindfulness and just attack it all at one time. 
um, or it's just going to take forever and a day because you never really know the cause. Is it osteoporosis of the skull or is it a pinched nerve because of muscle dysfunction? We'll put those two things together. If your posture is all screwed up, then I assume so is your blood delivery system and your lymphatic system, you know, like yeah. we just even discover with myself. And that's something I've known for a long time. I know my right side's a little bit weird. It's a little bit messed up. And if anything shows up on the outside of it, it's usually on the right side of the body. You know, this is, uh, there's obviously a physical connection here. So you yeah. can put those things together. And if your body is like, if the, the, your hose is not kinked, you know, all the many, many, many hoses in your body of large and small, mm -hmm. if everything's all straight, then, you know, the nutrition part can work properly, at least has a chance to. Yeah. And, and muscles are, just, they're just so strong. <laughs> Yeah, they will bully you mm. if, if you don't get them under control, you know? Well, it's even common in weightlifting. I come from the gym world. Everybody knows there's those guys who go in and just work out their chest and they start to get this, this weird stance because your muscles are just going to pull in you one way because one side of you is stronger than the other side. You need back muscles too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That exact, that's exactly it. Your front has to match your back and your left has to match your right. <laughs> It sounds so simple, right? Mm -hmm. It's so common sense, but it, it's just not the way we end up. Now, if you, you know, go visit the Eskimos or you go, you know, to the, the bush folk in Australia, you know, the people that are still living that, that tribal life, kind of, and they're out there and they're moving, they don't have the same issues that we do. <laughs> they're squatting to poop, you know, they got a good posture even in that regard, that's something that's popular, by the way, I said that because this is one of the posture things that's becoming really popular. They're selling this product called the squatty potty, which is basically just a little uh, stool that you put in front of your, your toilet so that you can get into the squatting position, which is, it, it seems to be the natural position to use the bathroom. It, so it, it kind of just forces everything out quickly and cleanly. And uh, interestingly that the, the modern person who sits for a living and doesn't know this posture stuff probably can't even comfortably get into that position. You know, so they can't even properly get into the position that they are supposed to be using the bathroom in uh, every single day for their entire lives. You know, and uh, we notice uh, you've probably seen our little cell phone test that we do with the frequency tuning discs. We, we realize the average civilian really can't even stand on one leg, you know, properly or comfortably at all. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> just pull them off the street and they're going to have a hard time standing on one leg. Something as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, squatty potty. I saw that. What in postural therapy we have a position called um, static back, and if you're laying on your back with your feet up in a ninety degree position on a block or a chair, and it's the same. It's you know like you're sitting on a toilet, but you're on your back, mm -hmm. and that does stimulate uh, the bowels to move. And so, it, yeah, I, I saw the squatty potty. I was like interested. Somebody selling the product. Well, it's, it's helping a lot of people with constipation and everything. And it's another thing with these hoses. It, it makes sense. Well, hey, if you put your legs up, then the, the hoses kind of align better. So it just doesn't have to force its way through a kink, you know? Yeah. And the kink can just be you sitting at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. There's nothing in nature that resembles a toilet, you know? Right. Right. And that's right. <laughs> and we also have the tower, the infamous tower. Uh, we only put people in that if they're a little advanced, like after four months type thing. But it, you know, it's for the psoas muscle, and it, you know, it gets your leg way up while your other one is on a block. It's quite strange, and people, uh, a lot of people end up crying. They end up laying there and they end up crying because the psoas absorbs a lot of emotion, supposedly, and you know, it's the root chakra. And so with somebody sitting there with a lot of pain body, a lot of trauma in them, and then they're just laying there, kind of like a meditation. Where, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And, and people just start crying. <laughs> so I've awesome. heard this before a ton of time, by the way. I, I have massage therapist friends, and they say that I, this is their language. I don't know where they get this from, but they say that the emotions are stored in the fascia. You get like pain physical uh, physical emotional mental pain stored in the fascia and they say it's very common for a fascia strong deep tissue massage or whatever to make people cry emotional tears not not pain tears and that's by their report you know yep pretty much 
very yeah. cool. Yeah, the body is 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 very interesting. You know, we we have the nutrition, which is the fuel, and the fuel goes into a vehicle, which is your posture, your musculoskeletal system, and then you have this onboard computer on your shoulders called the mind, and that's the strangest one of all. <laughs> and you know, we're a machine. The only difference is we can regenerate. Yeah, let me let me mention something because people are skeptical of this. What do you mean emotions are stored in the in the tissues? Whatever. Okay, flip it around. Uh, that flip it around to people who uh, talk about the placebo effect or the placebo response, as it's more appropriately labeled. Uh, this is your body's natural ability to heal itself. Uh, why do I say this? Because placebo outperforms most medicines. So there's you know you you couldn't even count how many testimonials there are of people who got out of their physical pain, they thought they had arthritis or carpal tunnel syndrome, but really they were just unhappy, deeply unhappy, deep, deeply unhappy. And they, you know, somehow through some form of mental based therapy got out of their physical pain. So there is most definitely a connection between the physical and the mental, you know, however you want to think about it, if you choose to use the words that emotions are, are stored in the body somehow or not, uh, there is certainly, there's certainly, certainly a connection. And so many people have gotten out of physical pain by, uh, dealing with the emotional and psychological problems that there's absolutely no question of a connection. Yeah. And Dr. John Sarno discovered this in the sixties or seventies and nicknamed it TMS, the mind body syndrome. Mm. And he's helped a lot of people in his day before he passed away. They would come to his seminars. He would teach them stuff and they would leave fixed because they started taking on the belief that, oh, it's just TMS. Mm. <laughs> and this is real. I mean, people get offended at this too. Like, how dare you downplay my pain saying that it could potentially be made up in the mind. But I promise a lot of disease is made up in the mind. Yeah. But and, and again, going back to peace over pain, the book, that's why I encourage people to do all three at the same time. To just 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 nip it in the bud because you really don't you just don't know the cause all the time we can't see in our bodies you know it it, it it's just hard like some things are exact like when my crp was a 6.1 oh it's pretty obvious i was inflamed from the oils and my essential fatties were low and my vitamin a was low so my fat soluble vitamins were in the you know the tank so i had to bring those up and mm -hmm. you know it balanced out so some things are black and white but most of them are it's, it's hard to pinpoint a cause sometimes so that's what that's why i wrote the book and, and angled it in that way so I think you did a really good job. I, I really like okay. the uh, basis that you cover and I'm looking forward to evolving this uh, with, with you. To, we work together. So with you, I'm looking to incorporate this stuff into our daily practice as well. And you have a Facebook group, correct? The Peace Over Pain Clinic. Has it got clinic in the name? Yep. Yep. A anyone can go there right now. Um, I do have a, a web page that gets you there faster. Peaceoverpain.com slash join the group. And in there, you can get the Peace Over Pain book for free, uh, audio and ebook version. You can download it for free. That's a really good price. It's my favorite price of all time. Zero. It's good. It's a good price. If you want the book, it's on Amazon for 20 bucks. So Dr. Reese, I appreciate you being here with us. We're about to get kicked off again. We got kicked off halfway through there. People might not have even noticed it because of swift editing, but... <laughs> We're going to get kicked off again. And I think we've, we've laid out a good uh, track here. I appreciate hearing your story. I hope it inspires other people as well. Um, you know, that you, you really can make a transformation uh, like no other, basically you're a different person. It seems completely uh, from 10 years ago. So mm -hmm. it's incredible. It's an incredible story. It's great to have you on board. Uh, it's great to have these different healing modalities within our umbrella and within the umbrella of anybody who's listening, you know, keep, keep looking, keep learning. Uh, just because we have a lot of great answers with nutrition, just because we get a lot of great results by doing basic stuff, that doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to learn about things. Maybe you didn't know about colon hydrotherapy until I just said that word right now. Maybe you should look into that. Maybe that'll blow your mind. You know, there's so many things out there that we can do to improve the way that our body works. And I think postural therapy, uh, it seems to be one of the very, very important things. There's a, a lot of 
uh, weird ideas within the chiropractic osteopathic world, but we're definitely onto something here, right? This connects him with acupuncture and all this, like uh, mm-hmm. we're c- kind of figuring it out that this drainage system is, is fundamentally important to our well being, And we can most definitely incorporate strategies to uh, have a more healthy system, lymphatic system in totality. Right on. Thanks for having me today. Do you have any closing words for us? You have a choice. Every time, every time a challenge comes around, it's peace or pain, it's your choice. That's my only message. Excellent. Make sure to follow Dr. Reese on Instagram at Reese, I believe. Yep. Peaceoverpain.com, Peace Over Pain Clinic Facebook group. Connect with him. Get your posture correct. Let us know. Share us with share the testimonials with us. The more of these testimonials we share, uh, the more difference we can make. People need to know that health is is more than just nutrition. It's more than just detox. It's more than just all this. We got to take care of our skeletons as well. This is our this is our car. We, we've really got to keep it in tip top shape. Mm-hmm. And it's not to do with exercise. It's not, none of this had to do with that. We didn't even mention exercise. Exercise is a totally different thing. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Once again, Doctor Reese, Doctor Kevin Reese. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Appreciate the audience. See you guys next time too. Thank you. All right. So I just wanted to share some progress updates. I've been doing Dr. Reese's protocol for just over a month. And we took these pictures just under a month in the program. And you can see a huge difference. Now, I'm really, truly not trying to stand purposely straight. I am trying to stand natural, just like he told me. But honestly, I no longer feel comfortable standing in that Eiffel Tower position Everything feels way straighter, way better. To me, it's unbelievable how quickly this has straightened me up when this is something that I've been dealing with my whole life. I have seen chiropractors. Like I said, I've been quoted by chiropractors to fix this fully for lots of money. And I wasn't prepared to do that just yet, but eventually that's what I was going to do. So I'm super glad I found this. I highly recommend reaching out to Dr. Reese at peaceoverpain.com. And I also wanted to mention that, just like he said, Some things get worse before they get better. Well, when I first started this, I had this explosion of acne on my back, which is really not normal. Normally, I only get some if I've been sitting a lot. And it's usually right there in the shoulders, like was in the original picture. But yeah, I got an explosion of acne for a while, which is now pretty much gone right away. Even though I'm sitting just as much, I'm right now working at the computer a lot. It's much more comfortable. I'm not experiencing the same pains. I'm not getting those weird pimples. And I will share a full video in the future about this whole process and the various updated photographs that we've taken. So stay tuned for that. My newest book, Everything You Should Know About Healthy Blood Sugar, goes into a lot of detail about one of the most complicated things we get asked about, which is healthy blood sugar. This covers all of the blood sugar problems you know about, including type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and other problems you might not know were blood sugar problems, including behavioral problems, sleep problems, and cardiovascular problems. This book also goes into a lot of detail on digestion and how primitive people and animals actually acquire the nutrients that they need for healthy blood sugar in their natural environment. And definitely check out my book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just $9.99. Definitely get yourself a copy of Dr. Wallach's cookbook. This is basically a textbook about how to cook without the bad foods, particularly oil and gluten. This is 300 pages stuffed full of recipes without the bad foods that they're usually made from. And of course, make sure to check out our food page, Notice Foods, that's on YouTube and at Notice Foods on Instagram. We have a lot of content up there teaching you how to cook without the bad foods that Dr. Wallach describes and Dr. Glidden's 12 bad foods, all of that, all of the rules that you need to know. And we have experienced chefs and bakers who will answer the questions in those inboxes. And I've also published a book in response to some of Dr. Wallach's criticisms, including the major articles that have been written against him on the internet. So if you are a Dr. Wallach fan or a Longevity distributor, I definitely recommend having this book in your toolkit. And all of my books, audiobooks, and links are available on my website, noticebooks.org.